Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to get right on into our program on today. I hope I find everyone doing well. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. All right, we're going to get right into the program. Our program on today is an article that I found on uh, by doctors Les and Leslie Parrott uh, from August 4th, 2021. And the article is the top five conflicts every married couple faces. The top five conflicts every married couple faces so our topic today is going to be dealing with conflicts within a marriage we know they all happen Uh, it's just a matter of getting past them and doing things to avoid the same conflict if you having conflicts over the same thing over and over and over again uh, there's something that you need to take another step or step back and figure out why you're having the same argument all the time okay so we're going to get started right here on today okay uh, what number one is uh, there should be one uh, there should be a sixth one in here but uh, we're going to go with what they have here they have five uh, the top five but there should be actually six I'll bring up the sixth one if I have time today Uh, but the number one is finances we can all pretty much agree that that is one of the conflicts that married couples face uh, throughout their marriage or sometime in their marriage whether you know whether they get past it or not uh, whether they have a lot of money or whether they have don't have a lot of money that uh, that conversation will come up sooner or later uh, if you have a lot of money, the conversation will come up that you're spending too much money. If you don't have a lot of money, the conversation will come, still come up that you're spending too much money. Uh, let's, let's see what we have here. Uh, money is one of the most common issues married couples face. Married couples fight about. Whether you're uh, talking about spending styles, how much is in your savings account, how much you should spend on vacation and holidays or even how the two of you view finances money is a hot topic however it's also a conversation many couples uh, avoid because of it's so volatile and that is so true sometimes they don't just don't talk about it because they know they'll get into a heated argument over it that uh, that subject is going to come up sometimes. Uh, uh, one of the parties might spend more than the other one, and they're trying to watch funds, especially if you have a goal set up. And, and that's one of the things you should be uh, discussing or should have been discussed, <coughs> excuse me, before you got married uh, is your goals, your dreams, what you are, uh, your plans in life. Like, for instance, if you're a married couple and you don't, you're not homeowners. One of the things that you would be planning on is saving to buy a house, saving for college funds for your uh, children. Uh, those are some of the things that should be discussed before you uh, walk down the aisle. But, you know, even if you're uh, after you get married, you know, those things will still come up. And that's one of the subjects that's going to definitely come up as you're going to be talking about, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to buy a house and. Uh, the conversation is going to come up about spending. And even if you're not trying to buy a house, even if you're already in a house, that subject is still going to come up about uh, spending money. The main thing to avoid conflicts uh, uh, when it comes to financing is never uh, have a surprise <laughs> within the, the, the spending. And what I mean by a surprise is one of the parties go out and buy something big. You know, if it's something small, that's that's fine. You know, we all like, for instance, if you 
going to buy some toothpaste or some underwear or something you're not going to call so oh, i need to get some underwear is that okay you know that's not that I'm not that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is like major purchases should not be done without uh both of you agreeing upon it because if you go out and make a major purchase you might cut into the budget budget some kind of budget that's being saved for something else and that's going to cause a big conflict uh, for instance, you wouldn't go out and buy a car without letting your spouse know, or even a house or something. You wouldn't go out and buy it. And guess what? I got a car, you know. <laughs> and even if you're trying to buy a car as a surprise, you still would, you know, go over. You, you would figure out a way to go over the finances to make sure you can, uh, you can afford the car before you go out and buy it, you know. Uh, but that's one of the major things you don't do make major purchases because that can cause all kind of conflicts you know and then you you know get into argument about it was well, my money I work for it and you 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 know it's not uh, and we said it uh, many times on the program it's not my money it's not your money it's our money because you are one once you uh, say I do everything is one. Uh, There's nothing wrong with having separate accounts, but you should also have a main account with both your names on it. Uh, you know, it's a, the account that you pay your bills out of or an account that you uh, use for vacation uh, and things of that nature. It should be, you know, that way you'll know what's going on and everything should be discussed among each other. There shouldn't be no surprises where uh, someone one come to the door with a what a foreclosed notice or eviction notice and you didn't know anything about it all those things should be discussed if there's something behind in the bills there should not be any surprises so there should be open communication and that's one of the things that people kind of or couples kind of avoid talking about is their finances and that's one of the major uh reasons why a lot of people uh, separate divorce because of the financing you know if one party lose the job and then it becomes hard on them uh, but you know what uh, when you walk down the aisle it's uh, supposed to be for better or for worse excuse me let me get a drink of water <laughs> all right all right <clears throat> ah, there we go <clears throat> Yeah, you, it should be uh, something that you both both discuss together, and, and you never uh, again make uh, those surprise. Uh, there shouldn't be no surprises in the financing, uh, and you know, it, like for instance, again, uh, someone you come home and there's a the lights are turned off or the gas is turned off because one party was uh, responsible for paying the bills and they never got paid because there wasn't enough money in the account and it wasn't uh communicated so communication is the key in uh, when dealing with your finances and it was a, sometimes a subject that you don't want to discuss and you know a lot of times on the sitcoms they uh when they uh the whoever pays the bills is sitting there writing out the bills they they in a bad mood and uh, oh dad must be doing the bills now because he's in a bad mood <laughs> they used to do something like that on some of the sitcoms which is kind of true in a way but it should never be that way it should be open discussion where you're communicating with each other when it comes to your finances and make sure you have some goals set uh, some plans made make, make sure you have a plan you know uh, because you don't want to be uh, renters all your life especially as a young couple make sure you uh, make a major purchase uh, having automobiles is fine but make sure you get uh, set aside something or have a dream where you're going to own be become homeowners uh, that's very important especially in minority uh, communities make sure that you are homeowners and when you become homeowners homeowners make sure you agree upon the area that you want to purchase a home you don't want to purchase a home in an area that's uh, going downhill and then you know a few years from there you're ready to move because uh, it's unsafe in the neighborhood. You have to think of your 
when you're making a purchase, you have to think of your wife coming in and out of the house, your children coming in, your daughters coming in and out. You have to make sure you uh, take all that in consideration when you're purchasing a home. Uh, you might like the bright lights of the city and the hustle and the bustle, but it might not be the right uh, decision to make, especially if you plan on having children, because uh, it, it, let's face it, you don't want to raise your children in the city. You know, <laughs> we came up in the city as, as children, but that you know, back then it was a different time, it was a different era. They had crime, but it was nothing like it is today, and you didn't face all the things that uh, people face now. So you have to take all that in consideration. And, you know, when you're purchasing a vehicle, you have to take that in consideration whether you can afford it and uh, what type of payments you're going to have and things of that nature. So those all should be discussed and uh, key to not getting into those arguments about financing again is communication. All right. We're going to go to number two. Number two, we kind of talked about uh, for the last couple of times, so we're not going to talk too long on it. And it's intimacy intimacy is uh, uh what we talked about last uh, week and i think we kind of touched on it the week before that uh, make sure you're prepared for it make sure that you uh plant a seed and make sure you uh look like you want to <laughs> like we said last week look like you want to be intimate uh, in other words uh prepare yourself make sure you're appropriately approaching each other and without uh without uh, uh you know without uh being you know obnoxious or things like that uh maybe i, I choose another word <laughs> without uh with respect with each other that's the word i want to use all right now we're gonna uh, go since we talked about that are we gonna go to the next one number three is careers uh work is a hot button issue in many marriages because it it can create such an imbalance in your life if you're not vigilant uh, basically what it uh, what they're saying here is uh, you have to know what type of careers that you're going into when you get married you know if you were in a career where it's very demanding once you get married uh, you should not put pressure on the per on the other party because they're working a lot of hours. For instance, if they work in a hospital and you get married, you, you can't uh, very well get upset with them because they're always working. They work in a hospital. You know, you're going to be, uh, when you work in a hospital, that's why you have to know what kind of careers and that they don't clash. Uh, for instance, if you're in a hospital, working in a hospital, you're not going to, there's going to be many days where you're not there on the holidays you're not going to be there in some evenings. Uh, you're not going to be there for uh, birthdays and things like that unless you take off those days. And you, your vacation has to be planned way ahead because of uh, scheduling at work because you have a, you know, working a flexible schedule. Uh, and the same thing with retail. That some people have careers in retail, you know, retail management or something. Uh, I know I went through that uh, for many years. Worked in uh, retail before I got into the banking industry, uh, and I retired from the banking industry. But when I was in the retail industry, it is very demanding. Uh, there'd be a lot of days you miss birthday parties. You miss, but those things should be discussed and sat down and talked about before you get married. If you know that person is in the career of a, in the medical field, you know they're not going to be. It's not a nine to five job. You know where you're both at home and sit down and have a uh, evening together. It's, that's not going to happen if uh, one of you are in in the medical field and there's you know in in uh, other fields if you're in the governmental fields or law enforcement uh, for instance if it, your spouse is a policeman or in law enforcement he's not going to be there there's going to be many days he's not going to be there and, and for instance if he's a fireman it's going to be times where he's gone you know uh, several days if they're in the military <clears throat> those things should be discussed and talked about uh, so careers can cause conflict because sometimes when people once they get married uh then they'll uh start 
uh, arguments over or you never hear, you know, but you knew that before you got married because you knew what kind of career they was in and that's going to be expected. Oh, uh, here's another one, another topic that uh, can cause arguments and disagreements is kids. And uh, we have always said on the program that that should be discussed that th things like that should be discussed before you walk down the aisle. Whether you want to have kids, when you have, you know, you plan it. But it, uh, most of the time, sometimes it don't necessarily happen when, you know, uh, you how you plan it. You might have it before you were, were ready to have kids. But that still should be discussed. Whether you want kids, you can't get married. And after you have kids, then you say, oh, I didn't want kids in the first place. You know, you can't say anything like that because they're here now, you know, and there's and there's such a blessing. So, so that's why you have to make sure that you're ready. Make sure you know your spouse. You discuss how many kids. You can't have one person that say, oh, I want to have eight kids. And I will say, no, I just want to have two. You know, have to, you have to have an agreement. Uh, because if you have go past the two kids, then they're going to be like, I didn't want another kid and we can't afford it, you know, and kids are very expensive. That's why it has to be discussed. Uh, you sit down and talk about it, you know, because you have to take in consideration that uh, there's going to be daycare. There's going to be, you know, and, and child care. Uh, there's going to be school. There's going to be college. All those things, all those things are very expensive. Uh, so you have to take all those things in consideration so it won't be arguments over, uh, you know, you're spending the children's college funds going back to financing. There we go again. So those things have to be uh, discussed. OK, here's another one. Number uh, this is number five. That was number Kids were number four. We had number five. Number five is chores. Now, this is a subject that most people get in arguments over. You have to share the chore, chores with your wife or with your spouse. You can, especially if you both are working. Even if you're not both working, you still share share the chores with your spouse. You can't expect uh, her to be working, you both working, and she come home and do everything. You know, you have to make sure that you do something, you pitch in with it, you get up, you know, especially if you both both are working. Don't expect the wife to get up every night when the baby wakes up take turns you did it last time i'll do it this time you know if you know know, know your spouses gets up earlier than you do or leave the house like for instance if they have to leave the house at five o'clock in the morning make sure that if you don't have to leave until eight nine you know then you get up you know during the night and just be uh thoughtful take be considerate of each other and uh the uh, chores won't, uh, things like that won't be a hindrance. Uh, that's going back to the kids. Uh, so make sure that, you know, and you don't expect your wife to cook every day. Uh, she's not a maid, so you don't expect her to be picking up after you. Make sure you be considerate. Come home when you come home, you hang your coat up and, you know, and you know, help with the laundry, help with the dishes and because most households, let's face it, most households have dishwashers and some people still won't use the dishwasher, won't wash the dishes. Uh, make a choice. <laughs> use the dishwasher or wash the dishes, but make sure I have a thing, uh, especially later in our marriage. At first, you know, when you first married, you, you have to learn as you go. So uh, that's why we have in this program. Uh, that's why we create. Uh, why I created this program because uh, you learn as you grow, as you uh, be in a marriage. So you want to make sure you. I want to make sure I tell young couples as they come up what to expect in a marriage. So make sure that you are uh, washing the dishes. There's nothing wrong with you washing the dishes and doing the laundry and things like that. It, it's just help your wife out. Don't. And then you wonder why there's no intimacy. She's too tired. <laughs> Working all day. Then come home. and got to cook. And then got to do laundry. Help out around the house. Help your wife out. You know, we had last, what was it, last year or when we first started the program, we had a thing called Help a Sister Out. Help a sister out. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, don't expect her to do everything and, you know, uh, Work all day, uh, clean the house, uh, make sure the kids are fed, and then uh, be intimate. You know, that that's not going to happen. 
at least take her out for dinner sometime. If you if you can't cook, your part of cooking would be to take her out. And don't always go somewhere cheap. Take her somewhere nice. And don't go all, always always go around the corner. <laughs> you got a car and the only place you go is down the street. Come on. <laughs> if you have a vehicle, go somewhere where it's nice. Go outside of your little area. Uh, some folks only go some like right around in the area. Just adventure out, you know, <laughs> and take her out to dinner and, and have a good time. And these are the five things. Let's go over them one more time, and then we're going to be uh, signing off. The five things that causes conflicts. Oh, I mentioned number six. Number six is attending church. That should have been in there somewhere. Number six is attending church. Make sure that. You and your, especially if you and your spouse agree to a church to attend. If you're if you were raised in the church and your wife doesn't like the church, you need to figure out another church. Or vice versa. If you were raised in the church and your husband does not like that church, you need to have that conversation, which should have been had before you got married, but in any way if it happens after you still need to have that conversation and figure out what church you want to attend because it's very important and it seemed to be underrated now that you know people get up and go to church it's it's very it seemed to be very underrated especially with couples you, you go to church most of the time most of the women in there are married, but they're, you know, they're there with just, just the kids. And in some occasions, the wife is just there by herself and the kids stay home with the father. Come on, guys. Make sure you get up uh, Sunday. It's only going to take, cause most church services are very considerate. And uh, you should be at a church that's considerate. Uh, you know, uh, what things are today, uh, with the hustle and bustle and everything is going on, you don't have to be in church for four hours. Come on. <laughs> that's why you can't get nobody in there. But if you, you know, your wife goes to church where they get out at a reasonable time, go on. You still have the whole afternoon. That way you'll be up and ready to go and and enjoy your Sunday with your, you know, with your family, especially if you are fortunate enough to be off on Sundays. Because I know when I first uh, went to the work uh, w uh, world, I was working a lot on Sundays, so I wasn't able to go on church. Or uh, I was one job I was working, I was off every other Sunday. But I wasn't off every Sunday. But if you're fortunate enough to be off every Sunday, don't make that your lazy day. Uh, attend, especially if your wife is going, getting up and going to church or getting the kids ready. And you staying at home because you want to watch the football game. <laughs> Most churches are out before the games even start. Uh, so you can, there's no excuse there. You can, you know, just make sure you go and, and be a support to her, you know. Because uh, the churches want to see us uh, fellows there as well as the women. You know, don't let it be all women in the church and, you know, and, and kids, you know. Make sure you go to church. Because when you go to church, your son will see that. And then when he become of age, of age, he will attend church with his uh, wife as well. If you see you stand at home, when he become of age, guess what? He's going to do the same thing. He's going to stay at home too and watch the games. <laughs> because he's used to seeing you do that. So that should have been uh, number six. Is attending church together. Now let's go over one more time. And then we're going to sign off. Uh, the first one is finances. Intimacy. Careers. Number four. Kids. Chores. And I added a number six. Which is attending church as a family. This is Pastor Larry. We're going to be signing off until we meet again. With Let's Talk marriage now remember all the music that you hear is from a wonderful app called whoop triggers plus you can find it on that android platform as well as the apple platform until we meet again this is pastor larry we're going to be signing off with let's talk marriage